Welcome to the UK firstly, man. How are you enjoying yourself so far? I'm enjoying it. I, I'm i enjoying it. I haven't been here too long, but it's been yeah. so far so good. Okay. It's cold, though. It's cold, <laughs> but I'm used to that. Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. I'm from. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's cold right now. What have you, um, you've got your first show tonight, so what, what can we expect? What can we, ex- we can expect? Sold out show. Sick. Um, uh... You can expect a crazy show, man. All this shows is like it's what like my favorite thing to do. Like mm. performing is my favorite thing to do. So a lot of energy, um, a lot of me going back and forth with the crowd. It's just fun. It feels like it's like a family thing. It doesn't yeah. even feel like it's a it's like a forced situation. You know, I know how it's gonna feel. It's gonna be natural. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. Sick. Um, like listening to your music, you can see lyricism is definitely something that's really important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say to someone who says that lyricism is maybe like a dying art in hip hop? I would say, hi, my name is Token, <laughs> and I'm not dead. Yeah. How important is that to you to to um, um to keep that alive? I super. I mean, it's super important for me just because uh, it's what I love to do. I mean, mm. I, I fell in love with just putting words together really young, so. Aside from how it people perceive it and how it's to how it looks to them, how it feels to them, it's something I love to do, mm. and I'm still developing new ways of like like my definition of lyricism changes like every month. Okay. You know, so I'm 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 not just like at a level where I feel like I know how to be lyrical. Like yeah. I I almost like. Uh, I almost want to, because I've done a lot of kind of compl- complicating the lyrics yeah. to make it more lyrical. Now I want to kind of, you know, see how lyrical I can get with saying, just it being dense, you know, being like a small amount. So I'm still learning so everything. Saying less? Yeah, saying, saying less and um, more in the feeling, more the energy of things. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like I'm just like, I don't picture, I don't call myself like, I'm... A lyri- I'm just a lyricist, like I'm on yeah. the lyricist level. I'm just like I'm just. There's a scale to it, you know. I and find I'm, that really interesting. That's something I think about a lot as well. Um, how, how could you, if you used to define it to me now, what do you define lyricism? It as like? Right now, I think of it as saying anything in a way that other people wouldn't think of saying it like that. Okay. Like for example. I think Lil Wayne is one of like the best lyricists ever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah ever. That's true. And it's not because he has he uses a bunch of syllables and rhymes a bunch of words. It's because he he his mind works in a way of like I'm like I'm like when I listen to a song I'm like how did he th- how did he even think of putting those words together mm-hmm. like how did he even think of that concept putting it with there like I think Two Chains is a crazy lyricist mm-hmm. just because every time I hear a line I'm like. Damn, like, I didn't think of that. Like, yeah, and it doesn't have to be like, whoa, it doesn't have to be like, it can be funny, it can be anything. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I look at, like, I think, like, I think bar for bar, like, Amy Winehouse could shit on, whoa. like, all these other rappers <laughs> because, like, I'm, I'm like, how did right. she think, you know what I mean? So it's like, there's different levels to it. That's where I'm at right now. That's sick. Tomorrow I'll probably have a different. <laughs> to go, like, all the way to the, I suppose, other side of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the term mumble rap? What do I think of the term itself? The term itself, yeah. I mean, I don't like any terms. I don't like any, 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 uh, I think just saying this is what something is when it's art is just mm. bad in general. Mm. That's why I say I'm, I wouldn't just call a, like, I'm at the lyricist level. Like, I wouldn't, I would never call someone mumble rap because it's like, mm. I don't like to define art. Like, you don't look at a painting and you're like, it's just a painting. Like, mm. I look at music the same way. It's like, they're all different. Yeah. And it's hard to compare them. Like, it's hard to compare different artists. It's hard to compare me with a different, with somebody who you put in that genre. Yeah. Because it's like, we're trying to do yeah, yeah. different things. So, I don't like any terms. You so know? Do you think there's like a, still a space for what those guys are doing? The guys that are being referred to as that? In absolutely. The culture? I mean, absolutely. I mean, to me, it's like... Um, hip-hop is the biggest thing in the world and it's mm. like 
it be arrogant for us not to allow it to have subgenres and rock is given sub all these other genres mm. are given subgenres and it doesn't make sense that hip hop just like battles itself and like we have to fight each other all the time like we should be happy that hip hop is so big and at the end of the day like there's fans who want to listen to that stuff so it's like it's all good and mm. and there's trends and there's everything that's just how the world works so i don't focus on what's not my forte like yeah. i don't focus on stuff that i don't listen to i listen to the stuff i listen to and i don't like feel the need to hate on it because it's just yeah, yeah. at the end of the day it's just art talk to me about the no soccer contest and then how did you get involved in that in the first time in the first place and how did it feel hitting that million views for the first time um well i'll take the first part first mm. um when i was young when i was younger i was entering a bunch of like online contests Mm. Just because it was, it like forced my music onto people, like people had to listen to it, like if they were going against me and or they judging, like they had to listen to it. So that's kind of where yeah. the idea started. Doing a bunch of contests, like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and then No Sucker MCs was a contest that I heard about, and I literally, I mean, I I hadn't entered a contest because I was doing like my own remixes f for a while, mm. um, but. I was like, let me do this contest. It was like, I decided like two days before it ended. Um, and I was like, let me just do it. So I, I wrote the song and recorded it, I think the same day. And then filmed the video the next day and just put it right out. Cause it was like, right, like the last day. Um, and it was like a super, just like natural process for me. I didn't expect anything of it. Cause mm. I did so many other contests, but it blew up. Like out of nowhere and, yeah. and, and uh like hit like half a million like in like a couple days or a few days and it's yeah. my first vi video to hit a million um uh and it was cr it was a crazy time it was like definitely a, a turning point for yeah. me and because uh that's when people started reaching out that's when I was learning more about the industry um and that's when you know that brought me to sway, which brought yeah. me to this, it brought me to that. So that was definitely like a mo, a, like a a big moment for yeah. me. And I won the contest. Yeah, sick. Well Shout done, out Kato. <laughs> um, yeah, moving to the to the sway freestyle and all of these things, I suppose. How much preparation goes into putting something like this together? Um, well, it, dep it depends, but sway uh, was a lot of preparation yeah. uh, because when I heard that that opportunity was on the table, I I knew it was it, I had to make it the biggest thing. Yeah. In my career so far and it was like I was just going to it then leaving it then to it then leaving it for like I don't remember exactly maybe like a, a couple weeks um just like oh I, I thought this I thought, I thought let me put that here let me and I and a, a lot of preparation mm. too much preparation to the point where I had to the day before I had to like cut it in half because it was too long mm. um a lot of preparation because moments like that is like it's what you it's it's really what you make of them it's not like you go to sway mm -hmm. and you pop off it's not like you go anywhere and you pop off it's yeah. about what you make of it there's people who go to sway and nobody even knows they go to sway yeah, yeah, yeah. so but you it, it's just how much you value the opportunity and mm -hmm. i knew how big it could have been i knew that sway like i've been waiting for that moment like ever since i started rapping Sweet. so Definitely a lot of preparation. Can you talk to me about, um, you've said that music is like medicine for you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, I started writing really to express what I was going through when yeah. I was kind of embarrassed to talk about it. Yeah. I was, you know, like six, seven, eight, and I never, even now, like I never felt like I'm the age that I actually am. Mm. So sometimes when I was young and I was going through this, this, all this stuff, I felt almost embarrassed to talk about it. Like I'm too young to be feeling this way. Yeah. Like I, like kids that are that young are just like, oh, they don't even know what life is. I felt like I knew mm. exactly what life was at that age. So, um, and just stuff going on in my house and, and, I just felt like I needed a release for it, and that's what I turned to writing for. Mm. Um, and first it was like, kind of just like a diary, it just rhymed. 
and then it and then I like fell in love with like metaphor it turned into poetry and then I fell in love with like really rhyming and then that's when it turned into rap so it really all this really started for me like this was never a thing to get popularity from Mm -hmm. or be famous or anything it was for me like my I didn't even want to put it out on the internet my Mm -hmm. friend found it and was like yo let me make this YouTube for you and I was like okay and it just happened Um, so that's why it's like a therapy for me yeah. it's like if any of this stuff didn't exist i would still be doing it mm. do you think that in society in general people have enough outlets to talk about those kind of things that they can talk about mental health issues yeah i think i think the opportunities are there it's a matter of if you take them or not mm. uh everything is at your fingertips like everything like my biggest thing what i'm trying to represent is just like you can really do anything it's just gonna take sacrifice and take a lot of work and Mm. take real love for what you do it's not like people like when i was it's not like when i started rapping i had all this local love like yeah you do you like no Mm -hmm. i I was releasing music and i was getting crazy like everyone who heard it was hating on me like my whole town like everybody Mm. But it was like I had a real love for it, and I knew what I wanted to do with it. So it was like tunnel vision. And it's like if you want to talk about something, you can. Mm. You know. And it's like if you want to quit something or you want to give up so early, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Because you probably maybe should. Because it's like not to say that everybody – Everybody who wants to quit at least one point should, but it's like you need to have that tunnel vision. You need to see mm. nothing else. Like I look at all these people I meet in the industry and stuff, and I'm like, you have to be at least a little bit insane because I think I'm a little bit insane yeah. to think that when I was so young, like I'm going to be right here in London, yeah. but I already knew. You're literally leading me to my next questions as I, as I'm going. But yeah. I, that was the next thing I was gonna say. Did you always feel confident that you was gonna prove those people wrong? I didn't even. It wasn't like I I I felt that oh I'm gonna prove you wrong one day. Mm. It was just like okay, like they hate me. It's mm. whatever. Like tunnel. Like just super tunnel vision. I I didn't. It wasn't like some passive way. I'm not, yeah. I didn't get success for passively yeah, 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 yeah. for other people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I do this for me. So mm. it's like, yeah, it was It was never about did proving you feel people like, wrong. Um, did you feel like you fitted in at school? No, I, I I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever really had like a, like a real crew or, or, I was always like, like even when I was in, uh, like first grade, second grade, I was like, I had, I would have like a friend occasionally, and then, mm. and then it wouldn't work out. I would either feel like I don't, I, I often felt like I wasn't mentally in the same place as people in my own age group. Yeah. So, I ended up hanging out with a lot of the older kids, and then when I started hanging out with a lot of the older kids. It was the older kids I shouldn't have been hanging out with. And I started getting into okay. a lot of trouble, and then the trouble led to my grade kind of being like a lot of a lot of parents being like. I talk about a lot of my older older music yeah. that isn't out, but a lot of parents being like, uh, "You shouldn't hang out with that kid." I got a lot of stories of like, I would do out being groups like to do presentations or projects together. Mm. I remember in like seventh grade and we would, and we, I'd say, okay, let's meet up and go to my house. And then be like, oh, like I'm I'm not allowed to go to your house. Mm. And, and I'll be like, all right, let's go to your house. And then it'd be like, no, like what you're not allowed in my house. Now I'm allowed <laughs> everybody's house. No, but now I'm not doing Spanish projects anymore. Yeah, yeah. But there was, a, it was, uh, it was a lot of that. But but that eventually that um, introvert side of me is really what let me just focus on the music even more. Mm. So it was kind of a, even though at the time it felt kind of shitty, it was like mm. kind of a blessing, you know. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Do you think um, in this age, 
that it's a benefit or obstacle being a white rapper. I, I think it is what you what you make it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think it's. I don't think it's either. I mean, there's definitely a lot of people who look at me and they're like, he definitely can't do that. And then mm -hmm. I prove them wrong. And then they're like, oh, he can do that. I think it matters on what type of level. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of messed up. It, 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 it's messed up. But some people, if I was black, probably wouldn't be fans of mine. Yeah, yeah. And because this world is fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's a weird, it's like a, it's a tough pill to swallow and be mm. like, damn. But it's like, once you break, once you break through, like, I feel like at first it was harder because when I was going into mm. the ciphers, like nobody expected it. But once I proved them wrong, it was like, and then there's some people who are going to be fans of me because, I don't know, it, it, it's a weird situation, but honestly, like... The world is the world, and yeah. all I can try to do is is better it with with my message. Yeah. So if even if people, even if that helps people to listen to me mm. in the future, because I don't really think it exists now. I think in the future, I'm gonna make my message strong enough that those people are going to change the people they are because I don't I don't I don't need anybody supporting me if that's if that's just you mean the those, those people that might um, just like just me listen to you because you're yeah. because you're white yeah it could change their perceptions of how they feel about yeah about be, race yeah absolutely cuz that's just the message of mm. that I have do you, in think, my music. Um, do you think it's something important um being a white rapper to speak on black issues uh I don't think anybody should speak on anything yeah. that they don't want to, sp they don't feel comfortable and they're not speaking from their heart. I don't yeah. think anybody should be forced because if I didn't know how to speak, I don't, if I didn't know how to talk about depression or happiness, like mm. I shouldn't be forced to because then people are going to, people who have dealt with that are going to hear me like this month like yeah. no know, know that it's not sincere mm. um everything i talk about is sincere so i'm never going to talk about some shit that i don't know about yeah, yeah, you yeah. know and i don't i don't think i don't think anybody has an obligation mm. to talk about anything because who knows if it's sincere or not i just think everybody should just follow what yeah. their heart says you know who do you think is your competition right now Like me from yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't look at it like I don't. I, I never, I never looked at it like, damn that guy, damn that guy's right there, <laughs> that guy's right. Like I never looked at it like that. Like me, mm. it's like, it's like the same thing when people ask me the question, where do you see yourself in twenty years or mm. ten years or five years? Like, I don't know. All I know is the amount that I work towards this mm. has been great for me so far and all I'm gonna do is continue working, continue working. Mm. So I don't I, I know that I'm all set as long as I keep doing that. Yeah. So I don't worry about what the other people are doing. I don't worry about the future too much as long as I just keep doing what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. Are you still independent? I'm independent, yeah. Do you think Artists need record labels in this age. Um, you definitely don't need. Mm. Um, you don't need anything. Mm. You don't need anything. Um, it it's I'm not I'm not Mister I'm not Mister Fuck every label. Yeah. I'm not Mister. I'm I'm not Mister Fuck every label, and I'm not Mister. You need to jump on a label. Mm. It's like. Every situation is different, and if the time calls for that, as long as the paperwork is right, it's right. Yeah. As long as people, a lot of fans have like this weird perception about like what happens when you sign to a label. What because the some side is like, like people who don't don't really know hip hop. They're like, is he signed? Mm. And then they're like, 
no. And they're like, oh. But, like, little did they know, like, I just fucking turned down every single thing that they yeah. would have just, they would have just been impressed by. But then there's other people like, don't sign, don't sign, don't sign. But it's just like, in this world, there's no, there's so much gray area and it's like, it's just about the paperwork and it's just about, mm. but right now, that isn't the goal to sign to a major. Yeah. No, like, my, my business right now is, is going good and I'm just, with my situation I have, mm. I'm just growing it and it's, it's been great so far. How important is um, social media to your journey so far? For my journey, super, super important. Um, like, especially because I was so young, too. Like, it wasn't, I could really get out there. Like, I needed a ride, yeah. you know? I couldn't get into certain places. So, for me specifically, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done without it. Mm. Uh, what it's 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 a different world, uh, and and it's really important to to manipulate it mm. to how how it should work for you. Like it's a beautiful thing because it's like it's like Instagram is so cool, man. Like you can yeah. make it look like how you want to feel. <laughs> like it, it's it's cool. Like you can really make it what you want to. It's not like you sign up for social media and they're like, here's your social media. This is what it's gonna look like. Like mm. you make it you. Yeah, which is. I think is a really cool thing. Yeah, man. All right, one last thing. Um, what advice would you give to an, another young artist who's in the position you were before this started taking off for you? I would say that well, it's a general. It's a general question, so it requires somewhat of a mm. general answer yeah. but here's what I would say um, anything is possible anything as long as you are willing to not just work hard and not just work smart because somebody could be a rapper could be the best rapper alive and he could and he, and he could rap he could be writing, he could be working harder than everybody else mm. and just writing and just writing. But at the end of the day, no one is seeing the piece of paper, right? Mm. So it's about working hard, but working smart and sacrifice. Like, you need to think about if you are not willing to sacrifice everything else, then don't do it. Mm. Not to say you are going to, but if you are not willing to, then it's not going to happen. And especially... If you're if you're starting out like the position that I was in, you need to be your number one fan, mm. and you need to find out who your number one fan is and be more of a fan of yourself than he is. Because the thing how people work is that they need they need that person to tell them that something is dope. Like like I was just saying this. Like people locally. People, not that many people were on me locally until someone like Mark Wahlberg reaches out mm. or all these, or somebody reaches out and say, oh, this kid is really dope. And they're like, oh, now I can think this kid is dope. They need that person. Mm. If you don't have that person, you need to be that person mm. because you can read confidence. People read confidence without knowing they're reading confidence mm. like a fucking book. So if you're super self-conscious... It, it, people are going to read on your face. They're going to read it with your posture without even knowing it. And they're going to say, that kid isn't dope because he doesn't think he's dope. Yeah. Subconsciously. But if you walk out there and you're like, if you really sincerely think you're the dopest thing alive in that moment, they're going to be like, okay, this kid must have something because he thinks he thinks he's that dope. Yeah, yeah. There must be something. Okay. So that would be that would be my advice. Cool, man. Thank you very much, man. Of course, bro. Enjoy your stay. Appreciate it. Good luck it, at your show tonight, man. Thank you, man.